I think a helpful place to start is just to really compassionately reflect with yourself, okay, what need is being met by by being online? Um, and it's not a bad one, right? I'm really, I'm really passionate about kind of taking taking down these assumptions we might have about social media being bad and being online being bad. I don't think that's true, but I think there is a space for us to get really curious about like, what are the emotional needs that I'm reaching for when I'm online, whether that's scrolling or whether that is posting, you know, whether we're creating or, or consuming content. So, you know, perhaps a place of curiosity is to scroll for, for 15 minutes and notice like, okay, what, what was I hoping to feel in that experience? How did it actually feel? You know, perhaps that's, we're hoping for rest. We're hoping for a moment to to detach after a really exhausting day. Those are really real and valid needs, right? We need those things. Um, And then there can be a place of, of deeper inquiry of, okay, so social media might be one way I get this need met. What are the other ways that I could build into my emotional tool belt Mm. to, to get this met if social media isn't always feeling like, like my favorite coping tool? Yeah. I like that. The the distinguishing, like what were you looking for? And then how did it actually feel? Because I think many people open social media looking for feelings of like connection, entertainment, or or all these things. And then they end up like, you know, I'm not sure if it's every every time, but you know, sometimes you end up with a lot of negative things like, oh, you start comparing yourself and you start um, or your brain just, sometimes my brain just feels like a mush scrolling for too long. And then I'm like, what did I just do? Um, because those apps are trained to keep you addicted. And so I think that's the, that's a mental health problem too, is like, how do we build mental strength and, and that self-discipline in a way to know when to shut it off? Cause I think a lot mm. of people just do it mindlessly and they're addicted. So how would you work with someone who, who has that issue? Mm. I mean, I have an issue myself, right? I think mm-hmm. I'm yeah, so glad I think you everybody mentioned. Everybody does. It's because it's literally why, like, it's the dopamine hit, right? Like, you see something new every totally. time you scroll. So, how do we break that? Because ultimately, we want to take back our time and our our energy, right? The first most important piece, and this is something you said, is shifting the blame. I see a lot of of conversations online about oh, I just need to do a digital detox or I need to have a different routine or ritual. Like there's a lot of personal responsibility taken for a systemic problem, right? Mm-hmm. Behind every every phone is thousands and thousands of software engineers, behavior analysts, like the, the intention of, of the attention economy is to keep us on our screens. So I think when I'm working with folks who are exploring this issue, the first thing is, to give ourselves a break, right? It's it's convenient for for those systems to say, yeah, it's a matter of discipline. You need to quit or find a way not to use these things so much. But you know, when we talk about addiction, you know, we're talking about something that impairs our ability to choose. So mm. I think the first thing, like I've said, is getting really kind to ourselves and gentle. Yeah, like, yeah this is hard. It's, it's designed to be hard and yeah. you're not weak, you're not faulty, you're not unintelligent if, if it's challenging to put your phone down. So what's the next step beyond the kindness to yourself? Like in, in kind of like working on letting go of some sort of addiction, whether it's to social media or something else. I think taking the attitude of a researcher at first, kind of gathering like, okay, how is this making me feel? And bringing that mindful awareness into how we experience it, right? So we're going to try really hard not to judge ourselves for the fact that it's hard. But then I think what can be really helpful if we're noticing a habit that isn't serving us or it's not a coping tool we want to keep reaching for, maybe starting to document how it felt after spending an hour or three hours or six hours scrolling, right? Mm-hmm. And just starting to drop in, what was that like for my body? What parts of that did I like, right? We don't need to say the whole experience is bad, but also what parts of it didn't I like? And when it comes to you know the actual good and the usefulness of social media, I think also building out what other what other places in my life do I find those things? If it's inspiration, then what are the offline or in-person spaces where I find that? If it's community, right. what are the offline or in-person spaces? Not that we always have to choose the offline space, but starting to build a web of 
of resources so that when we have this need for connection or validation or rest or whatever it is, there's a menu of options that, yep, it could include time online. It could also include a weekly dinner party with friends. It could include three pages of journaling. Um, so yeah, really building out that that emotional tool belt. And, yeah. and that's where I think art becomes a really powerful tool for people when we spend time online is it's really tactile, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of being with, with a screen where everything's pretty 2D, you actually get the experience and your body gets the experience of engaging with something physically. 